Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? I hope you're all doing well today. So you guys asked me to do the CSRF episodes on Ports Wigger Labs. Let's get right into them, shall we? The first one we're going to do is Lab CSRF, where token validation depends on token being present. So in this lab, the lab's email change functionality is vulnerable to CSRF. To solve the lab, use your exploit server to host an HTML page that uses a CSRF attack to change the viewer's email address. You have an account on the application that you can use to help design your attack. The credentials are Carlos and the password is Montoya. So we can go look at the solution, but first of all, let's take a look at the labs again. So when we look at the labs, first of all, I'm going to start up my burp suite, of course, and then of course I need to set my target and my scope properly. This is very important. I always use advanced scope control and then I use the regular expression of part of my website that I want to be in scope. Now, it's very important to have your scope set correctly because you don't want to capture all of those requests. Next thing I do is I open my proxy tab and in the intercept there is an open browser button. I click that to open my browser and then I should come to the website. Now on the website there are several different functionalities. As you guys can see I'm already logged in but I'm going to log out for now. Uh, when I log into the website I can do several things. There is, as you guys can see, there is just a home button and a login button now and some blog posts on which you can put a comment. But when I log in, there's a new functionality there and you can see that it's change email. Now when I click the change email functionality, of course I'm going to try it. So when I try that, when I look in my HTTP history, I can see a request being made to the change email and it's a post request with the email parameter and a CSRF parameter going to send this to the repeater because again I want to play a little bit with it like I normally want to play with my CSRF parameter. Let's say I want to test a CSRF parameter of the same length that's not working. Okay, let's try any CSRF parameter also not working. Maybe we should just leave it empty apparently also not working. But what if we completely leave the CSRF parameter out of the equation? Ta-da, we have a found, so we have our CSRF vulnerability. Now, to actually complete the lab, this is a step further than we bug bounty hunters would go. Of course, we would also create a CSRF POC. We would then copy that POC and we would paste it in our reports. And of course, we would test that POC. But if that proof of concept works, it works, and that's where we would stop. However, it's also very useful to know that you can include an auto submit script. So what this will do if we regenerate is it'll simply uh, add a script which will click the button and then we can copy the HTML. Now we can just click test in browser as well. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us a URL. When we paste that URL into our browser, it's going to, um, it's going to execute this code that's on screen right now. So what we want to do to solve this lab is actually copy the HTML. And here we have a button or we should have a button go to exploit server. I don't have it anymore because my lab is already solved, but I have the exploit server open. Um, and in here we can just paste the value in the body, click store, and when we click store, our lab is going to be solved. So that's it for this lab pretty simple and then we also have a lab and this lab is lab let me go real quick there we go csrf where token is not tied to user session now this is a really good one and i would highly advise you guys to look for this one in the wild as well because this is also a pretty good attack so this lab's email change functionality is again vulnerable to cross-site request forgery it uses tokens to try and prevent cross-site request request for the tags, but they aren't integrated into the site's session handling system. I love it when this happens. You guys probably have heard me talk about integration errors already before. Well, this is a typical example of one of those mistakes. They built functionality to where there is a change email function, 
but that function uses the CSRF properly, but it doesn't integrate with the session handling properly. So the function itself will integrate properly with the session handling. The function itself will integrate with CSRF, but all three systems combined, the CSRF will not integrate with the emails, uh, with the session handling system. To solve the lab, use the exploit server to host an HTML page that uses a CSRF attack to change the viewer's email address. Now we have two accounts for the application. That's what we always need, of course, otherwise we can't test this. We always need two accounts. You'll see why in a minute. And we'll start the lab again. So let's open this link in a new tab. And then when the link is loaded, we'll go and open this in our browser, which is connected to Burp Suite. Now we really do want Burp Suite open in the background, of course, because we want to go and see what requests are being made. But for this one, we want to take it a little bit further. So we have our link now. Let's paste it in here. For this one, we do want to take it a little bit further. We want to work with our interceptor here. So for the moment, it's still off. We are on a lab where the CSRF token is not tied to the user session. So in this instance, we'll again log in as Carlos. Carlos has again the change email functionality. And to test this, what you do is you update your email, but you put your intercept on, so you execute the function. Then when you update, you have your CSRF token here. Now you have to make sure that the CSRF token is not going to reach the server. So we're going to drop a request. This is very important because once that token reaches the server, it's not going to be valid anymore. We're going to notice that our request has been dropped. That's okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back. Now our intercept is still on, so let's turn it off. We're going to go back to our home page, log out and log in again as the second account that we received. And then here we're going to try exactly the same thing. So we're going to try our email functionality. This time we don't have to have our intercept on because we're interested in the HTTP history tab. And here we want the post request to change email. Now again, we can see a CSRF token in here. So let's send this to the repeater so we can play a little bit. Now we'll again change the value to one that is the same length see if that does anything no invalid csrf token okay let's just see if we have one in there <coughs> invalid csrf token maybe if we leave it out that's missing csrf token parameter and also if we leave out the parameter completely we get the same error so what we can do we do have this csrf token which is from our previous request now let's try this one and as we can see, this CSRF token is obviously not bound to the session. So what we can do as an attacker is always request to CSRF tokens from ourselves. We can just log in with our own account, request a CSRF token and use that in our attacks. Now to prove our impact for this, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go to our intercept tab again, go to our change email functionality, fill in our email and put our intercept on and we're going to capture the request to gain a new token these are the steps that you have to put into your report so pay close attention if you found this vulnerability copy this token drop the request put intercept off go back to the home page then we log out and we log in as the other account very important that you're not logged in as the same account. Now what you're going to do is you're going to do a change email with intercept turned off, update your email, go to your HTTP history, click on the post request, send it to the repeater. Then you're going to replace your CSRF token and you're going to right click to request, click on engagement tools and generate your CSRF proof of concept. Again, it's very useful that you can include your auto submit scripts. We generate this code and this code is what you're going to copy and paste into your report along with all of the steps that we've just mentioned. That's very important because you need to be very clear when you're writing a report. 
you have to be aware that some not as technical as you people might read the report and that's going to be important that they know what you're talking about. Now to solve this lab all you have to do is copy the HTML, go to your exploit server, paste the HTML code in the body and store it. Now that should solve the lab. Is it, if it doesn't completely you can still view the uh, exploit. We can't do that anymore because since we stored it, it already got executed. And that means our CSRF token reached the server and it got invalidated. Now, if you want to test this for yourself, again, you can test this in the browser and copy the URL and you can surf to the URL and we're going to get the same invalid CSRF token mistake uh, error in this instance. But if it's the first time that you use the CSRF token, it shouldn't give you this error. If it does give you this error and it is the first time that you use the CSRF token, you're probably doing something wrong. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would really appreciate the like because it's like 2 a.m. right now. And I hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye, amazing hackers.